kind of friggin' person bashes in their friend's knee? Who would do that to a friend? So it was just 23 years ago when we had two Olympic skiers competing for the gold with Tanya Harding versus Nancy Kerrigan. And everybody wanted to know about the incident, all the behind the scenes and good stuff. And now we have a film called I, Tanya. So what did I think about it? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for I, Tanya. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and also give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So now we have I, Tanya, and everybody pretty much remembers this story. I don't know how old you are if you're watching this, but it only happened 23 years ago in the mid 90s. It was 1990. 94 to be exact it was tanya harding versus nancy kerrigan competing for the goal in the olympics you know this film dives into a lot more story before that time but you know this movie is really about the incident and if you don't know the incident and this is completely you know new to you uh tanya harding and nancy kerrigan were two olympic um skiers they were competing for the goal in the olympics and uh, nancy kerrigan was more of the favorite she was more of the popular it looked like she was going to win so you know there was an incident to where a mysterious figure found nancy kerrigan you know back um in the coliseum in the hallways in the corridor you know pulled out some big metal police rod and just uh, knocked uh nancy kerrigan in the right knee to you know damage her knee so she wasn't able to compete and you know it was alleged or you know it was accused that you know tanya harding was the one that was behind it all or she knew about it and this movie here you know dives into that story and gives you a lot of the perspective from tanya harding side of view now uh, I, I remember this like it was yesterday um, I, I, I was around I think yeah, 10 years old when this came out uh, I, I remember watching the Olympics and watching all the skating and Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan coming up to this point and I was really into it or whatever I mean at this time this is when the triple axle was like just such a big deal like this this impossible feat that you could you know that com competitors tried to do on the ice and if you could do it it, you know you pretty much you was in there you won you was like the best of the best I, I remember this like it was yesterday I remember seeing Nancy Kerrigan on the interview screaming why why it hurts why did they do this and you know all the allegations and the accusations and you know mud slinging back and forth on who was responsible I remember all that if you don't know you can go on YouTube all that up right now and I just remember it like saying to myself, like, I was just so upset and frustrated. Like, man, like, how could you do this to somebody? Like, I mean, you know, don't be a sore loser, you know, do the best you can practice, you train. But if somebody beats you, you know, they just beat you. They're better than you. And you cannot, you know, just, you know, go out like that to where you hiring people to beat people's legs and things like that. That's just shady. You're a hater. You know, I was just really, you know, frustrated with Tanya Harding at the time. But at the same time, not really knowing if she was responsible but i do remember 23 years ago asking myself like man what was she thinking you know what really happened i wish i could get you know a little bit of backstory and now we have this movie i tell you to answer all those questions and you know i'm really glad i saw it now this movie is being directed by craig gillespie um, he is the director for The Finest Hours, which came out last year, 2016, uh, where it was a bunch of semen and Chris Pine was one of the lead actors. And I thought that film was pretty decent. And he also did Million Dollar Arm, which came out a little bit before that. And that was a film that I did not see. Now, Margot Robbie is the uh, titular uh, actor, actress in this movie playing Tonya Harding. Um, also, Sebastian Stan is her husband at the time by the name of Jeff Galuli. And Allison Janey is playing Tonya Harding's mother named Lavana Golden. And I'll just say this right off the top. The casting in this movie was spot on, especially from Allison Janey and Margot Robbie. I'm really not too familiar with Allison Janey's work. She did appear in the movie Juno that came out in 2007. And I missed that film. I really wanted to see it. Everybody told me how great it was, but I missed it. But she was also in the 
Help, which came out a number of years ago. They got nominated and got a lot of recognition during the war season. And so that was a great movie. And Margot Robbie popped up with me at the end of 2013 with The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, you know, before that, I pretty much never heard of her before. Of course, she was in Suicide Squad and... I believe, what was the other movie that she was in? I probably should have writ, wrote it down. Oh, the Tarzan movie. And also uh, Focus, which came out a couple of years ago with Will Smith. She's a great actress. And, you know, to be honest with you, um, this is possibly the, one of the better performances that I've seen her in out of all, you know, out of her whole filmography. And uh, I, I'll touch on that just a little bit more. But this film, you know, I, I like to divide films into parts, you know, two parts, three parts, four parts, three act structure or whatever but you can divide this film into um you know i guess yeah three parts as well not not in the act not in the three act structure but just three parts since to where it goes tanya harding's childhood and the way she was raised and just that whole environment the actual incident itself and then you know things after the after the incident and what took place after that and this is really just like a biography sports drama type of movie because it has sporting in it of course because they were ice figure skaters tanya harding and nancy kerrigan um this is also a drama because it's some of the stuff is sad it's also kind of a dark comedy as well and i'll get to that but it is really also a biography on the life of tanya harding because the film starts off you know at a very young age of her i think at the age of uh technically she was three years old but her mother being played by allison janey in real life her name is lavana golden you know she said a soft four and you know i i, I am uh, i'm not a doctor i'm not a psychologist but I did, you know, study that, you know, when I was in school and just me personally, you know, everybody is a product of their environment. You've heard that before, but it's just so true. And I realize that, you know, every day as I get older and I mean, there's just no other way around it. So just me personally, whether it's in a, a movie, a drama, a documentary, real life, whatever, I'm always just really interested in knowing, you know, where somebody came from, you know, why the way they are, you know, what what, you know, how were they raised? I mean, these things just really interest me. And, you know, like, why does someone have a chip on their shoulder? Why do they wear their heart on their sleeve? And like, what happened? You know, I've been told I'm a good listener. I mean, that's just kind of things that I'm interested in. And, you know, like when I was starting off this review, I was just really concerned, you know, with saying even now, before I saw this movie, now that I'm talking in when I was a child, when this real incident happened, I'm just like wanting to know what happened. And this movie is very good as far as just really telling you how Tanya Harding was raised and, you know, why she became the woman that she is today and at that time in 1992 and 1994. And, you know, no matter what someone goes through. Um, for the most part, like life is not fair. It's just not, you know, some people, you know, grow up and they're just treated like crap for no reason. And some people grow up with a silver spoon. And, you know, there's a lot in between as well in, in there as well. And, you know, we just can't do anything about it for the most part. All we can do is just take the cards that we're dealt and do the best that we possibly can. And, you know, that's what Tanya Harding had to do and how it was portrayed in this movie. And, you know, when people, you know, have hard times and they don't have all the advantages of somebody else, you know, I feel sorry for them to an extent. But at the same time, I'm also just like, hey, like I just said, you have to just do the best best you can you know with the cards that you dealt but if to be honest with you i'm not i don't feel sorry for tanya harding as far as you know I'm, i don't I, you know, I'm not just like, oh, she had a valid reason, you know, for being involved in, you know, getting Nancy Kerrigan's leg beat. But at the same time, when I watch this movie, I have to be honest with you. I, d I did feel a little bit sorry for her when I was watching this movie that just goes with the writing, the story, the plot and pacing of this movie and just the performances. And like, you know, Tanya Harden, she had a rough life. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just not fair. She had a her father was there in her life but it talks about you know her mother lavana how she was married six times that's a lot six times and tanya harding was her fourth child from her fifth husband and at, at a young age i want to say to about four or five maybe well five, five or six years old her father was in her life but things didn't work out with her mother lavana and you know he went his separate ways and you know just seeing like a little girl um you know playing what is the little girl's name because i really i i I should have wrote that down. Just give me a second, guys. Yeah, young Tanya Harding by uh, someone by the name of Mackenzie Grace. This is a very young 
actress. Let me look how old she is. She was born in two. Th- Whoa, she's 11 years old. Wow. She looked like she was much younger, but she was born June 25th of 2006. And this young child actress, this 11 year old did a really good job with emoting on screen. And I'm just like, man, you go little Tanya. I, I really feel sorry for you. There was just one scene to where she was just like, dad, don't leave me. And she did a much better job than I'm doing right now. But I'm just like, man, that just really sucks. You know, like, you know, the, the, just the things that children have to go through in the world. And it's just not their fault or whatever. And realize that I say it's not, you know, it's not her fault. I'm going to bring it up later. OK, I, I'm trying to make a point there. But, you know, little McKinney, McKinney Grace did a great job. Um, great casting there. Um, as far as Margot Robbie playing the teenage version of Tonya Harding, I thought that they could have got another actress to come in and do that because, you know, um, I'm just being honest with you. You know, Margot Robbie is a very attractive woman. She's very sexy as hell. And if you've seen uh, The Wolf of Wall Street, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've seen Suicide Squad, that crappy movie, you know what I'm talking about. So you can only de-age a grown woman so much. So seeing Margot Robbie with certain makeup and hairstyles and things like that, trying to portray a 15-year-old, I just really wasn't buying it. I'm like, okay, you don't look like you're 15. You know, they could have got a better actress in there. But that was only like one brief scene. So, you know, I'm not going to harp on that too much. And I'm just trying to, you know, go up the ladder as far as the age. When I said that this is a dark comedy, they do have some comedic elements in this movie as well. Like her mother was like extremely strict, like just strict as hell. Just like, you know, like just didn't have a filter. You know, I understand that she was trying to protect her daughter. But like one scene to where uh, Tanya Harding was going to go on a date, like her first date ever or whatever. The mom went with them or whatever. And, you know, I can understand you kind of like want to drop them off or something like that. You've been protective. I, I get that. But my goodness gracious, did you have to be there up under um, Tanya Harding and her date the whole time, like at the table while they're eating and just like, hey, have y'all had sex yet? And she didn't even say that. She said the F word. I'm just like, oh my God. It was shocking. But at the same time, it was funny. And with this being a bar, and a lot of dark moments in time and history that had to do with these two figure skaters. You know, I really have to give it up to the uh, writer, Steve Rogers, Captain America. I'm joking. It's not really Captain America, but the writer it really is named Steve Rogers. And if you know Marvel Comics, you get that. But for him to able to include little dark comedic moments like that in this movie, that kind of is... I don't want to say it's sad, but just, you know, has to do with an incident that is sad. I really like how he messed that together and how the director, Craig Gillespie, took advantage of that and didn't dilute the film or whatever. It actually brought it up and it, it made me laugh out loud, you know, like, you know, while I was in the theater. But, you know, just something else like uh, Lavana, her mother, like, was just really abusive and just really mean and just was like really demanding and was just kind of like a dictator i mean like you know wouldn't let her go to the bathroom like was verbally and physically abusive to the point where tanya harding just had to you know leave the house at a young age just like it was dangerous like her life was threatened well i don't want to exaggerate too much but it's like I don't want to spoil the movie for you either, but it was just like one time in the movie towards the beginning towards just something happened. They was having an argument. They was having a disagreement. I'm just like, okay, whoa, LaVon, you just took it too far and they just had to stop. And just like, I was like, okay, Tom, you just need to get away. This is not your fault. You know, um, and you just had to get out of this situation because it was just going to get worse. And what makes the matters worse is Lavana. She just was not, you know, uh, apologetic about it all. She had no remorse. She was just like, hey, you know, my mother treated me like crap and I'm going to treat you like crap, too. She didn't say that I'm going to treat you like crap, too. But she just was like, hey, you know, you should be grateful who I am. You know, uh, or the mother that you have within me. You know, my mother did treat me like crap. And I know it may seem like I'm talking a lot of spoilers, but this is movie is based on a true story and these interviews and things have been around for years that you can look up so i mean if you don't know the story i don't want to say i'm sorry but you know i'm just trust me i'm not spoiling anything for you and when i say this is based on a true story and this is also goes into the story and how this movie this movie this film was made is this movie is based on a true story based on interviews that had to do with all the key uh, influential figures that had to do it in real life um i nancy kerrigan did not interview in this movie at all um one of fun facts she was just like she didn't want to interview she also did not want to um see the film as well because i understand that she already lived this moment she actually said that herself but the people that are uh interviewed 
interviewed in this movie is, uh, of course, uh, Tanya Harding, uh, played by Margot Robbie, Sebastian Stan, Jeff Gulligly, uh, Gulligly, Allison Janey, Lavana Golden, and the bodyguard. Uh, what is his name? Uh, there's another like there's a, some I don't know if if you I, I don't remember this too well but if you're probably like 45 and up tell me if you remember um, a production company called Hard Copy because there's a gentleman by the name of Bobby Carnival that played the real life person of a Hard Copy um, you know um, what's the word I was going to say tactician not not uh, I want to say anchor or journalist or pundit um, and also the guy that played um, the guy to play Tanya Harding's uh, bodyguard. I didn't want to write his name down because I didn't think that I would bring him up in this review. But now I want to. But the thing about this film being based on interviews is it's not based off the real life interviews. It's based on the Well, it is based on those interviews. But in the film, the film has the interviews of the actors and actresses. So it's Sebastian Stan that's interviewing. It's, it's uh, Margot Robbie that's interviewing. It is Allison Janney that's interviewing. And that takes up about 35 to 40 percent of the movie. And that may sound like it could be kind of janky or disjointed or jarring. But no, the way that they included that into the film was fantastic. That was actually one of the best parts of the movie that I really did enjoy because it's just, you know, the 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 actor and the actress are just breaking the fourth wall, just talking to you like they can have Sebastian Stan as Jeff, her uh, husband at the time, saying something, but then have uh, Margot Robbie cut in as Tonya Harding be like, OK, yeah yeah, that part was true. That part was not true. And then vice versa. I loved all that. And that was just in the interviews itself. But then again, when you actually have the movie in itself, you actually had Tanya herself uh, played by Margot Robbie breaking the fourth wall, just looking at the camera like, OK, you know, I did shoot. the I did shoot the gun here or I didn't go that far. And it's just like a bunch of tattletelling at all. You really don't know exactly what's true and what's false and know where to draw the line. That may sound like it's uh, frustrating, but I actually found it fascinating, kind of like a little puzzle piece of myself. Like, OK, you know, like what's true, what's not true, just like a little game, in, you know, in my Myself. So, I mean, um, seeing Tonya Harding being brought up from childhood from like three to four years old all the way up to her uh, lower 20s was fantastic. And seeing all these interviews was fantastic as well. But then it finally gets over to the incident. And I like how they put that in the film as well, because it really gave you the perspective of not Tonya Harding, not just Nancy Kerrigan, but also the attackers themselves and like what they were thinking. And that could have easily been something that they could have ignored or brushed over because pretty much everybody knows and heard of this story. But they did give those characters a lot of attention and the acting during those scenes was, you know, quite that um, was quite good as well. And like before I shot this review, I, w I wanted to go back and look at all the real life interviews on YouTube just to refresh my memory. And they had a bunch of security officers like running through the hallways and running down the streets trying to find out you know who the guy was and where it came from you had some witnesses like yeah the guy had a club he was a big white guy with a leather jacket and he went that way and they're just running around not knowing what to do but in, like or knowing where he is but in contrast to that in the movie they gave you the full perspective of the uh, attacker from the time of them planning from the time of them coming to the arena while they're walking through the hallway and running around trying to escape or whatever so i mean i kind of feel like i have a full uh um, you know, a picture here and, you know, that this film really answered a lot of questions that I've had for the last 23 years. I mean, I wasn't thinking about this five years ago. Like, man, I still wish I knew what happened during, you know, the Tonya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan incident. But now that this is a film that there is in theaters and there, you know, it's coming more coming to the light of day. It is something that I really did appreciate. The only other gripe that I have about this film is and I completely understand why they may not have wanted to include it was that at one point in time they started telling you about the relationship between Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding and talking about how they were friends but they just kind of jump cut to that real quick and then they cut away and I was like okay okay you said there was friends we got 30 seconds of it and then you know, there was in the same hotel room and then we don't get any of that anymore and we just get the incident or whatever 
And so the incident, like I, I just talked about that, that was uh, fantastic as well. And then we get a little bit after the incident. And that is a lot of, a lot of the court proceedings and things like that. And um, like I said before, there is a lot of comedic dark moments in this movie. And just with one, like with Tanya Harding's bodyguard, the guy is a freaking baboon idiot or whatever. Um, the way he was portrayed in this movie. And, you know, I was just kind of laughing just how stupid he was and just you know how he would lie to himself and just you know he was freaking delusional or whatever so again just them being able to co combine these comedic moments in this time or whatever i just thought that was a great job by the director um and the writer now um i want to see is there anything else that i want to talk about i think that's pretty much it yeah 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 i hit on that point i hit on that point i hit on that point and i hit on that point but I feel like I'm leaving something else out that's just really important. Now, as far as the true story goes, um, for a long time after the incident, Tanya Harding denied that she did not know about the attack. She denied, she denied, she denied. I saw one interview, like real life interview, where she they said that she never admitted it. And then another one to where she finally came out and said that she did know about the attack before it comes. She ended up... Um, she ended up not even placing at the Olympics in 94. Um, Nancy, no, Tanya Hart, not Nancy Kerrigan ended up getting like the bronze medal in 92 and the um, the um, silver medal at the Olympics. But I, oh, yeah, I just want to touch back like Tanya Harding throughout this whole movie played by Margaret Robert just kept saying that, you know, this is not my fault. This is not my fault. This is not my fault. She kept putting the blame on other people. And while it, sometimes I don't feel sorry for her, in some instances I do. And I'm just really torn by that, you know, um, because she really just did have a crappy upbringing. And I really seen this from this movie. And, and that was just pretty much the best part of it to me. Um, you know, the skating was great. Um, you know, she was not. They had to do some CGI for her to do the triple axel. And now that was great. But Ma Margot Robbie's performance in this thing was fantastic i said at the very beginning of this review that um this is the best performance that i've seen her do um because there was just one time like after the incident when she was still just trying to perform she was just broken and you know trying to put up makeup and she just looked horrible i'm not trying to clown her or anything but i'm just like damn i mean like I feel sorry for you. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't feel sorry for you. If you knew about the attack, that's this, this, this despicable. You got to take your L's when they come. You got to take the W's when they come. You win some, you lose some. But it was just one scene to where she was about to perform, and she just didn't. She, she, she would just pull in every which way. You know, her, her mom treated her like crap. Uh, her husband treated her like crap and beat on her and all this. And she was so she would fight back. And then it, it, the, the competitions wasn't fair either. I mean, they just wasn't judging her on the skating. It was just because of the image. And she was just like, look, why can't you just judge me on the skating? And they're just like, you're not the image that we want. You're you're uh, representing America. You know, these snobby judges. And I'm just like, man, it just really sucks. It's just not fair. And this film did a great job of putting it on the forefront. And so those are the points where I actually feel sorry for Tony Hardy, you know, and Margot Robbie made me feel that way with her acting because it was just this one scene to where she just like looking at the screen like I have nothing left like God, you know, and it was just a great performance, guys. Um, I really did enjoy this movie and it really frustrates me because this is actually one of the better movies of the year and it's going to make my uh, top 10 best films of 2017 even hard so yes i will be uh i will be having well let me well yeah i, I can talk about that well yeah, okay i will be making a top 10 best of 2017 and though the top 10 is going to be the 10 films that i deserve that i feel should be in the oscar race i also will have be having a top 10 favorite of 2017 those are my favorite my biased opinion doesn't have anything to do with quality just you know my favorite biased opinion um, I'm also going to review uh, All the Money in the World. I'll probably post that tomorrow, probably post the two top tens on Sunday. And I don't know if I'm going to do a top ten worse. 
I don't know if I do it, excuse me, um, it'll just be a surprise. But guys, if I have to rate I, Tanya out of a 1 out of 10, I would easily give this a 9 out of 10. Yes, a 9 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen I, Tanya? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also, check me out on my website, Bookmark, at our would appreciate it also go to my uh look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff it's right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it easy by providing a link to all that down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for i tanya starring sebastian stan margot robbie and allison janey directed by craig gillespie and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace